Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to review the Hershey stock. So if you're following the news recently, you know that the weight loss drug Ozempic made a big headline over the last few days. It's a weight loss drug that can kill your appetite and people are speculating that this drug will potentially harm the bottom lines for snacks and beverage companies. Because, you know, the theory is you're less likely to consume sugary snacks and drinks if you take this drug. So as a result of that, some of the great companies recently sold off pretty aggressively. You can think of like uh, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, Yum Brands, and Hershey, uh, to name just a few companies that sold off pretty aggressively recently. So I think these are exactly the time when you should be doing fundamental research on a strong companies and see if you can buy them at a reasonable price. So that's exactly what you know, I would like to do in this video for Hardship. Now the ticker symbol for the stock is HSY. It's down more than 17% year to date. And from its recent peak, it's down almost 32%. So that's a significant correction for a blue chip dividend growth stock like Hardship. It's currently trading at around $187 per share. So that means a market cap of $38 billion. So in this video, I'm going to look at the fundamentals of their business and see if we can find an investment opportunity here. Just a quick disclaimer, this is my personal research and not a recommendation to buy or sell the stock. So with that being said, let's first take a look at their revenue numbers over the last seven years. So as you can see here, they increased their revenue from $7.4 billion in 2016 to about $10.9 billion in the trailing 12 months. So that's a compounded 6% growth in revenue. Nothing extraordinary, but I would say it's a decent growth for a blue chip company like Hershey. If you look at their net income numbers, that's actually growing at an impressive 14% CAGR. $720 million of net profits in 2016 and they made about $1.8 billion of net profit in the trailing 12 months. So that's very impressive. In terms of free cash flow, that tells you a very similar story, 13% CAGR in free cash flow over that exact same time period. So that looks pretty solid to me as well. Okay, so just to make a quick comment on their high net income and free cash flow growth numbers, typically if the management does an excellent job in cost control, pricing strategy, and maybe selling more high margin products, it is possible to increase profitability at a much higher rate than their sales growth rate. So I think that's exactly what's happening with Hershey in this case. All right, so looking at their revenue segmentations, 82% of their sales are coming from North American confectionery business. Then you have 10% from North American salty snacks and only about 8% from the international market. So it's basically a North American business with a very small international exposure. And I think they have a great growth opportunity in the international market. If they can grow their 8% pie to a bigger one, let's say 15 to 20% of their sales coming from the international market, I think that would be excellent for the investors. Now their international market revenue is actually growing at a much higher rate than their overall revenue growth. So for example, since 2020, their international market sales grew at 13.5% CAGR, which is substantially better than their overall 6% revenue growth rate. So I would like to see this trend continue going forward. Right, so now moving on to their margins. If we look at their gross margin over the last 10 years, you can see it's very consistent at around 45%. So that tells me they have a very strong competitive position because when a business can maintain a good steady margin for an extended period of time, that typically indicates they have a strong economic moat. So in my opinion, this is one of the signs that it's a great business. Now, if you look at their operating margin, it's very strong as well. Since 2016, it's consistently growing and above 20%. So that's very good to see. Net margin showing you a very similar trend, above 15% net margin, that's excellent. And if you look at their free cash flow margin, that's currently sitting above 15% as well. So that means every $100 they sell, $15 converts to free cash flow. Uh, and that's basically a free cash flow machine for you. Very impressive performance from Hershey. If you look at their return on invested capital or ROIC, 
that's excellent above 20 percent roic now roic is one of the most important metrics that i personally look for when analyzing a business um, specifically a high roic consistently high roic indicates a very high quality business which is what we see in the case of harsher so i think overall i like their profit margins and roic and things have been improving since their current CEO, Michelle Bach, joined the company in 2017. So definitely she's doing something right in terms of profitability and capital allocation for the company. And I hope that continues going forward. So the balance sheet looks very good to me. They have around $446 million of cash sitting on their balance sheet as of their last quarterly report. In terms of debt, I can see about $850 million of short-term debt and about $4 billion of uh, long-term debt. So basically $5 billion of short-term and long-term interest-bearing debt. Now, if you are just for their cash position, you get a $4.5 billion of net debt position. If you take their annual average free cash flow of $1.5 billion, you know, I think they can easily service their debt without any serious damage or anything like that. I'm very positive about their balance sheet as of now. Now looking at the dividends, dividends are growing at 10.5% CAGR over the last 10 years, which is very impressive. Current dividend yield is sitting at around 2.5%, nothing exceptional, but very safe dividend and covered by free cash flows. As you can see here, their dividends have been very well covered by their free cash flows over the last seven years. So I don't see any risk of a dividend cut anytime uh, from Hershey. In terms of share buyback, the management bought back 9.2% of the total shares outstanding over the last 10 years. Now that's not significant, but I think it's very consistent and the share count gradually going down, which is a good thing overall from the management. So I think I really like what I've been seeing here from the management in terms of ROIC, profit margins, dividends, and share buyback. What I would like to see now is if the management and the founder of the company has vested interest in the business. So what I mean by that is I would like to check whether they have a meaningful holding of the shares. So from their most recent proxy statement, Harshi Trust Company holds around 57 million shares. Um, so that's about 30% of the business. Now, this is a trust company that was established by the founder, Milton Harshi and his wife, basically to continue their legacy. And they have a substantial asset management business and they conduct other meaningful charitable work for the society. So I don't really think they're going to dump their 30% stake and ruin the reputation and you know purpose of the entire trust. So you can view this as the founder himself owning about 30% of the company and I feel good about that. Now, looking at the holdings of the CEO, she beneficially owns about 370K shares. So that's about $72 million worth of shares. Now that's a very substantial position by the CEO especially when you compare that with her annual compensation of about $13 million in 2022. I think that's a substantial position by the CEO. So I think the management and the founder has vested interest in the business, uh, which is a great thing to see. Basically, if the share price appreciates, the management and the founder trust will benefit from the share price appreciation, just like us, common shareholders. So I really like this kind of shareholder alignment from Hershey Management. All right, so coming on to the valuations of the business, if we take their last five years average free cash flow and divide it by their enterprise value, we get a free cash flow yield of 3.56%. So this is lower than the 10-year treasury yield of around 4.8%. However, keep in mind that they're growing their free cash flows at 13% CAGR, whereas the yield on 10-year treasury is basically fixed. So in that sense, I would argue that it's reasonably priced at the current share price of $187 per share. Now, I also did a basic DCF model forecasting their cash flows over the next 10 years and calculate the perpetual cash flows. I then discounted those future cash flows at a 8% discount rate 
and I get an intrinsic value of around $194 per share. And with a 10% margin of safety, my target buy price is $175 per share. And you can pause this slide and check the assumptions I used for this model. Uh, basically, the model is showing that Hershey is currently trading slightly below their intrinsic fair price. And if you buy the stock today at $187, you don't really have a big margin of safety. For full disclosure, personally, I started accumulating the shares at around $195. And I'll basically increase my holdings if it goes down more going forward. All right, so what are some of the risks to consider? If you guys like the video so far, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's completely free. I make detailed stock analysis videos just like this one. And you might find some interesting ideas from my channel. I hope you do. All right, so other than the weight loss drug Ozempic related concern, which I honestly think is exaggerated, there are some other risks that you want to consider. So the first risk, risk that I can see here is the raw material cost going up. So as the cocoa and sugar prices keep rising, that definitely increase their input cost. So this inflationary pressure will have some impact on their margins, at least in the short term. The other risk is the potential for higher labor cost, especially with the rise of labor unions at different parts of their business. This is a real concern. I think around 30% of Hershey workers has salary negotiation agreements every few years. So that might put some pressure in terms of costs going up and margins going down for Hershey. So that's something to keep in mind. And again, I don't think Ozempic will kill their business. I think people will not stop eating sugary snacks and drinks anytime soon. And that's true all across the world, not just in the US. So I'm not too concerned about that in the near term. Okay, so let's summarize the video. So I think their revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth numbers look solid. Their international market is growing at 13 to 14% CAGR, much better than their overall revenue growth. Uh, so I think in terms of growth, they have a solid growth numbers. High margins and ROIC, indicating a great business with exceptional competitive position. Balance sheet looks solid to me. I don't see any risk of bankruptcy or anything of that nature anytime soon. Management has good alignment with the shareholders. Uh, they have substantial position in Hershey stocks, so I like that. Dividends are growing at double-digit CAGR and very safe, covered by their free cash flow. So I don't see any risk there as well. And finally, at this point, at $187 per share, I think the stock is reasonably priced. Um, so that's just my opinion. As mentioned before, I have a small position, somewhere around 0.5% of my portfolio. If it keeps falling, I'll increase my position. So that's my plan moving forward for Hershey. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider liking and subscribing. It's completely free and really helps me growing the channel. Uh, with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Good luck with your investment.